Hi folks, HR Funk here with a Smith & Wesson Model 66 Combat Magnum. Now a lot of you know I'm a big fan of the Combat Magnums, both the blue Model 19s and the stainless steel version Model 66. Unfortunately, this one is almost unusable. And the reason that I say that is because the double action pull on this revolver is extremely heavy. It is probably over 20 pounds. Also, when I attempt to open the cylinder to load and unload this revolver, it's very difficult to move the thumb latch forward and actually get into it. And another odd thing is when the cylinder is closed, the action locks and you can't fire the revolver in either double or single action. So this revolver has quite a few problems and in this video I'm going to try to remedy those problems and resurrect this revolver. Now an interesting thing that I'll say right here at the beginning is there is actually nothing wrong with this revolver. The reason that I say that is because the parts are not broken, they're not extremely worn, there's nothing like that going on. In fact the revolver is in pretty good condition but the reason for all of this revolver's problems have to do with the way that it was maintained over the years. Someone who owned this revolver improperly lubricated it for years and years. And they essentially over lubricated it and probably used the wrong type of lubrication. That lubrication over time started to congeal and eventually hardened and actually rendered this revolver to a point that it is, as I said, nearly unusable. And I suspect that owner, as he started to notice that the action was getting stiffer and it was getting harder to open and close and all that, probably added more lube, thinking that would help the situation, and in fact, that just made it worse as that new lubricant congealed and then hardened. And when I get up close with this revolver, I'll show you exactly how stiff the action is and a lot of these parts. And throughout the video, what I'm going to be doing is completely disassembling this revolver then I'm going to clean off all of that old lubricant and properly lubricate the revolver and then reassemble it and we're going to see exactly how much difference that makes. And I have to say at this point a couple of things. First off, I have not opened this revolver so I don't know what the inside condition is but I don't doubt that what I just told you is absolutely true. Also, I'm not going to be showing the disassembly and reassembly of this revolver. Rather, what I'm going to be doing is stopping at steps along the way and showing the video of what I'm seeing and what I'm doing at that point. The reason for that has to do with YouTube. If I show any type of disassembly or reassembly, they will restrict this video, demonetize it, and not very many of you will probably even get a notification when it goes live. So for that reason, I'm not going to show the actual steps in taking all the parts apart and putting them all back together, but I will show you different things that I'm doing along the way and what I'm doing to restore this revolver back to working condition. So here's the close-up look at our Ailing Model 66 and I will show you those conditions that I was talking about just a few minutes ago. First off, the double action pull on this revolver, as I mentioned, is very heavy. Much heavier than it should be for this type of a revolver. Also, as I said, when I push forward on the cylinder latch, it takes a lot of force just to be able to move that cylinder pin forward and be able to open the revolver. The extractor rod itself is kind of sticky. It doesn't want to move back and forth freely inside of the cylinder. And when I push that back in, initially I cannot fire the revolver either double or single action because that cylinder pin is so restricted in its movement and the bolt itself is so sticky inside the frame that it's actually not moving back out of position to allow the revolver to fire. Now at this point it finally has. But you'll notice that when you push forward on the thumb piece and I release it, it's moving back very slowly and again at this point the action is completely locked until that spring pressure finally moves the thumb piece all the way back and releases the action. Again, this is all to do with that congealed lubricant and you can actually see some of it on the hammer right here where someone has poured that down inside of the revolver over the years and I'm sure 
they did the exact same thing with the cylinder, which is why the cylinder pin also doesn't want to move. So at this point, I've removed the grips, and the first thing I notice is the entire grip frame underneath the grips feels like it's coated in glue. And this is exactly what's going on on the inside of this revolver. You can actually see this here, that old congealed lubricant. And again, you don't have to excessively lubricate this type of a revolver. It has to be lubricated properly, but excessive lubrication will only cause problems. And that's true not only for revolvers, but other types of firearms too. If you improperly maintain them, over lubricate them, or otherwise don't maintain them properly, you can take a perfectly functional firearm and make it a non-functional firearm. So I've removed the side plate and I found exactly what I expected to find inside of this revolver. You can see all of this old lubricant. It actually looks and feels like varnish inside there. And from the inside, we can see exactly what I was showing before. This is the inside of the bolt. And when I push that forward, when I push the thumb piece forward on the other side, if I can, as though I was going to be opening the revolver, you can see the tail of the bolt comes underneath the hammer as a safety feature. And when I release it, it's not coming back. Now eventually that's slowly going to move to the rear and it will get to the point where the revolver will function. But obviously this is all a result of this congealed lubricant. And again, it's almost like glue inside of this thing. And here's a quick look at the inside of the side plate, and you can see we have the same thing on this side. So all of this is restricting the movement of those parts and preventing the revolver from operating the way it should. And I'll try to get you a look at the action, or maybe I should say the non-action, of this cylinder pin. And you can see how slowly that is moving back out and how much that's restricted by all that congealed gunk that's down inside there. So at this point, I've finished disassembling the frame of our Model 66 here. And inside of the frame cutout, you can see, once again, all of that old congealed lubricant. We can also see some rust in this cutout where the bolt normally would be. When we look at the individual parts themselves, we see more of the same. The bolt itself is in pretty bad condition. I'll see if I can focus this a little bit better for you. We've got rust, we've got the old congealed oil on there. Again, this is all very, very sticky. It feels like it's coated in glue. Same thing with the hammer. And again, you can see everything that should be moving freely is moving very slowly. Same thing on the trigger. The hand still moves fairly well, but again, the whole thing is extremely sticky. The rebound slide uh, had a good deal of trouble getting this thing out. It was almost like it was glued to the inside of the frame, but I finally managed to get it out of there. And I didn't launch the spring into uh, orbit, so that was nice too. So in just a couple of minutes, I'll start to clean these parts. Before I do that, I'm going to disassemble the cylinder because again, we're going to need to get that center pin out and clean the inside of the cylinder and the pin to try to get some better movement on that thing. And I've succeeded in disassembling the cylinder. This is another thing that did not want to come apart, but I eventually got that extractor rod to turn and got it out of there. Take a look at this center pin and I'm going to try to get that so you can see it. Once again, at all that old lubricant that's around the circumference of that thing. And again, when it's inside of the extractor, 
it just feels like it is full of glue. So it's going to take me a little while to clean that all out. And I'm going to start the cleaning process next. And I will show you some of how I'm going to do that. And first up is going to be our frame and side plate. And I've actually had this soaking for a little while. I coated the inside with Hoppy's number nine. And I'm going to start to scrub all of these areas. And I'll do a lot more scrubbing off camera than I'm doing on camera. But I just wanted you to see how I'm going about this and cleaning this all out so that as I put the parts back in, they're going to move freely on these surfaces where they rest. And also, when I'm done scrubbing, I will dry this area out so that there's no old hoppies left in there to start this process over again. For some of these small holes and recesses in the frame, I'm going to be using a pipe cleaner that is also coated with hoppies. Just try to make sure I get into there and get these areas good and clean. And as I mentioned, the side plate is going to get the same treatment as the inside of the frame. And you can see that old varnished lubricant coming off right before your eyes. And here's a look at that frame cutout after cleaning. You can see all of the old lubricant is gone. That rust that was in there is gone. Actually, there wasn't a lot of rust, but uh, the little bit that was there is gone. And there's a look at the side plate. Also now completely cleaned. Doesn't feel anymore like it's been dipped in glue. And I'm going to proceed to clean all of the parts back here exactly the same way. I'm going to use the hoppies and my brushes and my pipe cleaners to clean these all up and then I'll reinstall them one at a time and we'll see how the revolver functions when all of that is removed. And here's a look at our bolt all cleaned up and ready for reinstallation back inside the frame and something tells me it's going to move a lot more freely now than it did before. And I would say yes, that bolt is definitely moving much better than it did before. And as you can see, I also have the cylinder stop reinstalled. So the next part that I'm going to work on is the trigger. And here is our nice clean trigger, all ready for installation back inside the Model 66. And the trigger is back where it belongs. And the rebound spring and slide are reinstalled. And everything is looking good so far. And there is the internals of the frame of our Model 66, all reinstalled and ready for the side plate to be replaced. And before I do that, I'm going to put some lube in just a couple of places. I'm going to put one drop right here on the hammer pin. I'm going to put another drop on the trigger pin. And I'm going to put just a little bit of a bead right there on the rebound slide. And that's really all the more lubrication that the inside of this revolver needs. And the frame is all reassembled. The grip panels are reinstalled. And everything not only appears to be working properly, but it feels much, much better. Just tremendously better than it did before. Oh, and by the way, 
now we can see that thumb piece is moving the way it's supposed to be. And now it's time to turn my attention toward the cylinder, and I'm going to be doing the same thing with these parts that I did with the parts inside of the revolver. I'm going to get them all cleaned up, all that old lube cleaned off, and then I'll reinstall those as well. And here's our cylinder, all cleaned and reassembled. And you remember that cylinder pin that did not want to come out of there before? You see now it's popping out just like it should. And here is our fully reassembled, repaired, and now fully functional combat magnum. And I wish I could have handed you this before I started this project and let you try it now to see how much difference there is in that action. Also, everything now works just the way it's supposed to, and this revolver is once again ready for service. And there you have it, folks. A very nice Smith & Wesson Model 66 Combat Magnum that had been rendered unserviceable as a result of some poor maintenance has now been resurrected and it's ready for duty as a result of some good maintenance. And that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you purchase anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... And if you use that discount code, it's good for 5% off anything you purchase from Optics Planet. See you next time, folks. And until then, good shooting. Bye-bye.